Welcome back to these Redux lessons. In the previous lesson, we saw a synchronous action created with a Redux thunk, which is a middleware, and gives you the ability to return not only objects from your actions, but also uh, promises or functions. So with Redux thunk, we created these uh, fetch articles. In this lesson, I want to show you how to do the same thing with a, a middleware, with a custom middleware, because in the end, Redux thunk, it's just a custom middleware. Now, uh, the choice is up to you, because if you want to use an external library like Redux thunk, you're free to do that. But if you want to avoid importing uh, any external library and you want more flexibility over the creation of asynchronous actions, then an asynchronous middleware is the right choice. So um, let's think a moment about what, do, what we want to handle in this, uh, in this logic. Um, I have also these two endpoints. This API will run uh, quickly. This one instead will take 10 seconds to run. In fact, if I visit that with the browser, you can see that it takes 10 seconds to return any result. And uh, I have got this uh, endpoint because I want to show you how to uh, stop a fetch request when, the, when any external API takes too long to run. Um, so what do we want to do here is to handle uh, maybe three actions. So we've got already fetch articles up here and uh, we can also say articles fetched and there could be also articles errored maybe for handling uh, API errors and we can define the action up here articles fetched will be a string. Now let's remove Redux thunk here because we are going to create our own middleware. Articles will uh, become again a plain uh, Redux action uh, with a type fetch articles. Um, I don't think we need a payload at this point. We will see later. Uh, thunk could go away here as well and what we're going to do is to create our own middleware. Just a quick recap, a middleware in Redux is a function that is able to intercept the action before it is going to reach the reducer. And we already got this logger middleware here which logs an action to the console. Uh, in fact, we run this uh, simple application and we logged the action there. Now, um, I think this application uh, is broken right now and let me run this let me click here click me oh it is still logging our actions so we're good to go so we've got this type fetch articles which comes from the logger middleware and this other log here comes from this subscribe because if you remember subscribe is the redux method for subscribing subscribing it to a, a state change okay so let's create this asynchronous middleware. Name this middleware API middleware. Of course, this is just an example, so you're free to call your asynchronous middleware however you like. Now, if you remember, the middleware takes store as a parameter. I don't think we will need a get state in this middleware, so we can just destructure this patch from the store object because sure, we will dispatch some action after the API call. Um, now the middleware has this inner function here and this inner function takes this other function here which takes action as a parameter. Uh, don't forget to call next action to make your application run. If you forget to call next action your Redux application will break now, with this middleware, with this skeleton of middleware, we can apply it here in this array, API middleware, and now this array of middleware will be, will be applied with apply middleware here. Now, keep in mind that we're still in this classic Redux code 
in the next lessons we will finally uh, turn again our attention to Redux Toolkit and to create async thunk, which is a new method for creating asynchronous actions. Now, uh, asynchronous actions with a middleware is a topic that you need to know because uh, if, if you want to have more flexibility over asynchronous actions, then the middleware could be a, a nice uh, choice. Uh, now, before going inside this middleware, le let's create uh, a utility function for code the API and since we want to fetch articles because I have I've got that API with a list of, of the links and articles uh, we can create a um, links API maybe which con will contain a list of function for getting uh, stuff from the API you can extend this file with uh, a post request, for example, or whatever you want. For now, let's create just a function called get links. Now, this function can take a parameter named timeout because we're going to see also how to stop a fetch request when it takes too long to run. Um, you can abort a fetch request with the abort controller. Uh, what you need to do is to create a controller with abort controller. This controller will return a signal. And this signal can be passed to fetch when you make the request. Uh, let's move the in the in our utility file. here uh, the, the our fetch request will call the this endpoint so return from this function fetch which takes the endpoint and takes also an object which is a request in it and we can pass here the signal this is the abort signal um, now, before chaining then, let's say that when the request takes too long, maybe when the request takes more than the timeout that we specify, we want to abort that request. And we abort with the request with this method controller.abort. Now, when we call controller.abort, the fetch request will stop. And we will pass this timeout from the outside. Um, anyway, let me use this sleepy endpoint here so we can see uh, how it looks like uh, when it is uh, stopped. We can attach then here and we know that we, we get, a, get a fetch request, we have access to the response and then we need to check that the response object is OK property is true if it's true that means that the request went well if that property is false it means that request errored out if the request went wrong we throw an error with throw error and we can pass the status text here if instead response is good we return the json so with response dot json now we're ready to use this utility function in our middleware and we can say that when we click this button, so let's uh, say here instead of click me, fetch data. I don't think this Redux working needs to stay here anymore. Uh, okay, so we see we say that when we click this fetch data, we can dispatch our fetch articles action. As you can see, the action became pure again, and it, it is just returning a, a plain JavaScript object. Now we will handle this fetch articles actions inside our API middleware. And um, you can use a, an if, but let's use a switch now. And we say that when action type is equal to fetch articles then we fetch that api with our function that we created in that file so let me import get links it should have been imported 
automatically. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, we fetch the um, we fetch the data from the API with get links, and we can provide a timeout here. So after four seconds, this uh, API call will be stopped by uh, the abort controller. And once we call the API, we can get the data. So we get JSON here. And we can also dispatch another action. This new action could be, let's write this action in line for now. This new action could be type uh, articles fetched like so, you can also create an action creator for this article fetched. And let's do that because we need the payload too. So we're going to create this articles fetched, which takes the payload that will be the actual JSON. So we return type articles fetched and with the payload. And this payload will be handled by the reducer. So uh, here we can dispatch articles fetched and we can pass JSON here. So this is an asynchronous middleware where instead of creating an asynchronous action creator with Redux Thunk, you place directly that asynchronous logic inside the middleware. We need a default branch here as a default. Uh, re uh, let's do nothing for now uh, and we also need to place a break here now let's try this asynchronous middleware in the browser if we click fetch data here since we said that when the request takes too long in this case it will take 10 seconds when the request takes too long we want to stop this request with the abort controller so let's click here and fetch data uh, while there let's open up the uh, network tab for Firefox and you can see that we've got this get request here and this get request has zero bytes and we didn't even get the uh, response code in fact if I open up the console tab here I can see that the operation was aborted by the Abbott controller so whenever you need to put an hold on a request when it takes too long remember to use this abort controller. Now Axios has the same feature but I prefer fetch because it is a, a, a standard API and in, it works in service workers too. Now instead of this sleepy let's call again the quick endpoint and um, let's take a, a look again on the, at this code. We get fetch articles and we dispatch articles fetched with this JSON. Uh, let's handle this articles fetch in the reducer. And we need another case here. And we say case article fetched. Of course, we can remove this as fetch now because it is a remnant from the previous code. So case articles fetched. When you get this article fetch, then return a new object where you spread the initial state as well as with the initial state, we update articles, which now will be the JSON from the uh, fetch payload. So articles will be state.articles. Uh, dot concatenate to the original articles action dot payload okay so we handle this article fetched action here of course in case the fetch API errors out or you abort request or whatever you want to do you need to handle those additional actions here in the reducer for now, let's keep things simple and let's go with just this articles fetched action. Of course, here uh, you can have many middleware, you can have a get API middleware, get whatever middleware for simplicity. I just uh, kept everything in a single middleware here. Uh, you can also have, of course, um, other actions to handle, but the theory behind, behind an asynchronous uh, middleware is that you create this custom middleware where you place uh, asynchronous actions or API calls or timeouts, whatever you want. 
Now let's click again here and let's see what happens. Good, we get these fetch articles. Here we get these articles fetched with the payload. This is the logger middleware that is logging the, uh, the actual action. So you can see that we got the payload from the API. Uh, we can also see that the logger middleware is logging our actions. Mm. I'm also expecting to see this store.subscribe to uh, trigger when we update the state, but it seems that it's not the case. So it's, it appears that the uh, middleware is stopping our actions. Oh yes, of course, because I've got this default here. Now this default is stopping the application altogether. Oh, let me try again, fetch data. We get fetch articles and then we get this other action here logged by the middleware and we also get the articles here updated from this console log get state so we can see that the state is being updated correctly and we get the articles from the API. Okay. And this is it. This is the uh, asynchronous middleware in Redux that can replace Redux thunk. In the next lessons, we will focus again our attention on Redux Toolkit and we will see um, create async thunk and again all the methods that make this library really nice to work with. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I've also got a Telegram channel where you can get updates for new tutorials or new videos. If you have any question or do you, if you have any feedback, feel free to comment in the section below. See you later.